power, the reality of the power of, of, of being weak and humble. More likely, I'm finna talk. It's called being weak and humble. How can, how can being weak can understanding your weaknesses, you know what I'm saying, make you humble? Well, the thing is, I, I notice a lot of people and how they go about uh, life. They, you know, feel that that they have to uh, be, of course, better than you know, another person, or they feel like they should be at a place of that they are um, mindful of other things and, you know, or, or more likely the Mr. Know-all, know-it-all, and, and we got Mrs. Know-it-alls, and that they think that they're supposed to carry this ideal way of, of, of being somebody that knows a lot of things you know, as a source of strength and strength to be recognized by other people that they are some kind of special person that knoweth all. And they look at that as a sign of accomplishment concerning that they are, that they are something special. But the thing is, of course, that ideal doing that most of the time leads to ha developing pride within yourself and pride in God does not mix um, the thing is when we you know think well notice it says we know it all and what Paul says is the carnal mind and, you know having a carnal mind is death but you know having spiritual leads to life you know what I'm saying and the thing is, what we don't understand are uh, Romans uh, 8 and 6. Um, what we don't understand that the idea of true strength, especially spiritual, is something to become humble. That's where the true strength in being a servant of God, of course, that we need to understand that we are servants of God. You know, that a servant must remain humble to continually to perform as a servant concerning of God. But understanding our weakness is supposed to help us become more humble. Now, uh, the thing is, at uh, one time, you know, I'm, I'm finna show you an idea of what I learned one time that God told me about uh, one game Michael Jordan uh, had a flu. And he had a flu, and you know, they maybe not play, but Michael Jordan said, you know, played anyway. He had a flu, but the thing is, he played anyway, and he's they say he scored so many points, you know what I'm saying, in that game. That you know, with the flu, he uh made a great impact in the game, and I, you know, thought that was amazing. But God told me something. You know what I'm saying? I say, I say, Mac, you know what made him, you know, score so many points uh, in the game? It was the flu. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, huh? He said, it was the flu that made Michael Jordan score so many points. He, The reason why, that Michael Jordan, what he did, he performed knowing that there was an ailment in him. He, more likely, he respected his ailment, that he had a flu. That he felt that he had to insert himself more carefully in what he was doing concerning his performance. More likely, he needed to emphasize what he do mainly more better to counteract the flu. You know what I'm saying? He understood this flu may hinder his performance. And with that understanding that flu may hinder his performance, made him felt like he must excel at what he doing more. And the thing is, he, you know, and that's what driven him to felt like he must perform more. And that's what, you know, but, and I bet, you know, I don't know, Michael Jordan had his mind, you know, he might felt the congestion, he might felt the, you know, the, you know, nausea, the stuff that you feel in flu. But with that, he felt, he felt that he must emphasize enough in his ability to perform in this situation 
that it caused him to do more than he bargained for. Now, what am I trying to say? That, you know, the thing is, as Christians, what we must understand, but let's say that the flu represent his weakness, that he knew that he had in him the inner, that something that may interfere with his performance, that made him felt that he must excel more than he usually do. And the thing is, what God taught me about understanding my weaknesses, that I'm I must learn that I must, ex it must tell me that I must excel in pretty much understanding of how much I need God. You know what I'm saying? Because the thing is, I learned from the place God, you know, like, a, you know, I shout out to Toby Mac. I love that song that uh, he got out called The Unknown. You know what I'm saying? Uh, way Beyond Me. Yeah, the Way Beyond Me. But the thing is, God has to put us in situations that, you know, trust is the game. Trust, believe, have faith, trust in God. It's the name of the game of a true servant of God, as Jesus showed us. That, you know, we got to put ourselves in situations that make us lean upon our strengths. And Michael Jordan, you know, lean upon his ability, but we got to lean upon our strength. And our strength, of course, Philly 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That it will, our weakness will tell us to lean upon him, lean upon his strength more and more. Is what the idea of our weakness is supposed to help us. And it will help us keep us humble. You know what I'm saying? It will keep us in a place of humility that we don't get caught up within ourselves or get caught up within our own ability. We will get caught, we will be about, we know we need the Lord. We know we need Jesus Christ. We know we need the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. We know we need his word. We will be, you're supposed to be Jesus Christ of You know what I'm saying? When you understand your weaknesses and you will understand that other people are weak and other people are yielding, submitting to their weaknesses and, and allowing the flesh to control their body and control them to want and desire to do sin. You understand that is going on with people that you will come in a way humble to them to try to present the remedy of Christ Jesus to them and tell them how much they will make them understand how much they really going to need him and to to handle to counteract the weaknesses that is inside of their body. You know what I'm saying? And that's what is supposed to make us drive uh, our weakness is supposed to, in our weakness, he becomes strong. See, not, because to, to me, I look at it to this place. I come to this understanding within me. I can't speak for nobody else. That when, when I'm weak, Jesus make me strong. You know what I'm saying? It's no Mac receiving strength. No, God, Jesus Christ in me is going to receive strength. You know what I'm saying? Not Mac Johnson going to receive strength. I, I, I. I don't look at myself as the facilitator of getting the strength. No, the greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I do. I put everything on that giving me strength. I do not take credit of the things that I do concerning of God. I put it on the greater is he that is in me. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't want the credit. I don't deserve the credit because really, I'm really just to me dust. I'm just the dust of the ground without the breath of life of, you know, God inside me. And Jesus Christ giving me the ability and the strength to overcome the accomplishments in my life that I'm doing right now. All glory belongs to God and Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? And I don't put nothing on Matt Johnson. Not going to put anything on Matt Johnson because it's because it's a lie to me. It's a lie I come to the place, it's a lie that I am, the per, uh, if any greatness, anything that I accomplish that you see in the outward and you see Mac Johnson, if you put that on Mac Johnson, it's a lie to me. It's a lie. I can only put everything on Jesus Christ, the greatest he that is in me than he that's in the world that gave me the ability to perform what I'm doing. Mac Johnson is weak. You know what I'm saying? Matt Johnson had, doesn't really have the ability to accomplish 
whatsoever, anything in life, anything in life. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem of people that establish the mind of pride. We think that we have the ability to do something. And we think having the ability to do something and show people that you can do this, we think it's like a people, you know, conformers. We think we all people praise us. Oh, we, like I saw posts and I loved it, you know, people, you know, live for people's praises. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, you know, I live to, I, Mac lives to praise God and Jesus Christ. I don't live for people praises. I don't want the praises of men. Oh, my, Mac, you did this. Oh, Mac, you did that. No, the, I, I didn't do nothing without, like, you know, the idea of a Christian, you know, is Christ, I, A, N. Christ, I am nothing. You know what I'm saying? I am nothing without God. You know, I'm part of WGIN click. I cannot accomplish the things in my life without him. Without him, I am nothing. And the thing is, to exalt Matt, Matt Johnson and put anything on Matt Johnson, of me accomplishing anything in life, it's a lie to me. And I feel like I'm living a lie if I even try to think that I have the ability to do anything. Anything. Watch this. I'm going through anything. If, you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, you know, like, you know, I, I did a post that says, you know, I worship God alone. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the thing is, I, I will not be nothing without him. I am nothing. And I will only worship God alone because the thing is, I don't see myself having the ability. And I don't see nobody else having the ability to give me the strength. And I know that God has gave them the ability. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, these preachers and... You know, people, uh, you know, influence in my life. You know, when you get to the place that you think you did something, you think you accomplished something, you desiring the praises of people, conformers, you know what I'm saying? You really are not in the real game. The wrong, you're in the wrong game or you in a lying game because to me, Genesis 126 or, you know, God blew breath in man and man became a living soul. God established everything. It's foolish to put anything on us to think that we accomplish things in our life. It's just foolish. You know, I see, you know, the world system all about, say, you know, trying to be better than everybody and because it's about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. That's a lie. You know what I'm saying? That idea, uh, you know, word is a lie. It's all about God. God is the creator. God created everything. God created people. You know what I'm saying? Without him, you will not exist. Period. Point blank. In the discussion that I come to my understanding, you know what I'm saying? Because I am not going to put no glory on nobody or no, nothing over here, but only to God because that is the reality of the truth of Genesis first chapter. You know what I'm saying? It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? He established everything. Everything, every glory belongs to him. So anybody that even see, live to try to seek to get glory is a fool. I mean, that's what happened to Satan. And Satan fell from heaven trying to be in a place that he wanted glory to himself. And what you need to understand about, you know, people that get to the place, they are a fool because fools fall. That's what they do. Fools are professional at falling. But the wise are professional at rising because they understand that God will, as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead from God's from God, that the same God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will raise you up in spite of the situations and circumstances that go on in your life. That you know God will raise the Jesus Christ inside Matt Johnson up that I will learn to become an overcomer through him that I will achieve and accomplish in the fulfilling the will of God and the purpose of my life and that's the message and I hope you come to that understanding too when you uh, seek after God seek his face and turn away from your wicked ways that's the message and humble yourself yeah yeah wise King Solomon said that to God be the glory him forever and ever in Jesus name amen but he needed God's wisdom that he desired to be the wise king that he is today.
get off of pride and stay humble.